How much do you think the crowd really powered you guys on the defensive side of the ball as well? A lot. Because uh, for me, at least personally, and I think a lot of the other guys, as a defender, when you all that crowd knows is going, you're not really thinking. You're just going out there playing and reacting. So it kind of makes the play faster. And then now we're just hitting. And once we make a play and everyone's screaming, like that adrenaline just keeps flowing. You guys faced adversity today that you hadn't really seen so far this season. How do you feel like you guys handled that? I think we handled it well. Everyone kept their heads up on the sideline. People were still communicating. No one put their heads down. Uh, we responded. Um, you know, we had turnovers. We had, you know, the one play touchdown and things like that, where that's usually when losing teams would probably get down on themselves, start arguing. That's when the gap opens up. But we, we, we handled it really well. I mean, how do you learn something different about yourself in a game when there are moments when things can go wrong and you don't allow them to go wrong? Basically? Definitely. It, it makes me trust the offense more. It makes me trust, you know, my teammates uh, on my side of the ball more. It makes it just the chemistry goes up and gets a lot better. Because now it's like, while we're down, it's probably usually just mistakes that we made on our end. So we just clean those up and we can get right back to it. How much did those early sacks set the tone for you guys that you got? Oh, it was big because nothing like getting a sack in like the first quarter. That's when you know like you have them at your first. So those were huge. I think you guys forced three and outs after the first three turnovers. Like, what do you think were the key, keys to getting stops on those possessions? Uh, the D-line playing as fast as we were playing. Uh, the tackles was balling. CJ, Carp, uh, Nell on the other end. I was balling. Freak coming in. Mario coming in. I think it really started with the D-line. And then, of course, we got Fish, we got Jaywalk, we got the backers that come in and clean everything else up. But our back end, they was hooping, they was balling. Because we can't get sacks if they're not covering. So they was covering. And I think as a defense, we play really well. How does, how does having guys like that on the defensive line really open things up for you? It makes it so they, they can't double team us, basically. If you're going to double team me, then we got more dogs on my other side. They go double team Nell or Carp and any of the other guys. Now, everyone else has one on ones we're going to eat. Those moments where you go out there after the offense gets, uh, turns it over, do you feel like you know I have to go out there and, and back them up and, and get the ball back, or you know how do you kind of approach those moments? For sure, it's like I mean it's a brotherhood, so you know we messed we messed up a, a couple times and they had to get her get our back, and it's the same vice versa. So it's just like, all right, who's your brother's keeper? You just got to go out there and, and, and do it for your brother. C.J. West seems to have found another level the last couple of weeks. What, what have you seen? Kind of seen him after that little bit of a slow start? He's just playing violent. Like he's, I think. A lot of those guys getting used to the, the playbook and things like that, especially since he wasn't here in the spring. Uh, just him coming in the fall, it was just getting used to the playbook, getting used to his teammates. And now he's he's at another level, which is just going to make this thing just really come, continue to blossom. Did this resemble the defense from James Madison last year, kind of the blueprint where you guys dictate sure. everything? For sure. For sure. We're all playing really fast and vertical, um, especially playing against Maryland, who are JMU's old offensive line coach is here at Maryland now. So we kind of knew the scheme that they were going to give us and the way they were going to block things. So I was able to coach them up on some of those things. And we just played. We're just going to keep building on this every single week. Both with the crowd here today and maybe around campus, around town during the week, do you start to feel the fans buying in more and more? Definitely. Definitely. I think today was a big day for them. I think us winning this game, now the guys think we're legit. So, but we got to keep our heads you know, still locked in. Uh, and continue to grow it every single week. But I know for sure the crowds are going to start to sell out and it's going to get even crazier. Two more. What strategies do you have for yourself to kind of take that energy and continue to build? Um, Really just because, I mean, we are 5-0, and out, but we still have a bunch more games left. So it's, it's cool. Like right now I get to enjoy it. Tomorrow I get to enjoy it. But come Monday, it's time to reset for next week. What the sack mean to you? It was huge. It was just, just a staple. You know, just to tell of Maryland, you know, they should have recruited me. <laughs> but uh, it was just a staple. But at the end of the day, stats don't really, really matter like that. But uh, it was just fun playing with my, my brothers out there. And it was, it was special today, for sure. Thanks, Thanks.